So the biggest expense you will ever pay is going to be taxes. And today I want to talk about why having a business, even if it's one on the side, is a great way to reduce your tax burden, even if you have a job. Hey, if you're into personal finance and how to achieve time freedom, especially through real estate, please consider giving this video a like and a subscribe if you want to see new videos from me that I release every week. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It helps me out a ton. Okay, so the tax rate in the United States as of today is currently 22% if you make between $40,000 and $85,000 a year if you're filing as a single person. Now that changes if you're filing jointly or married, but I'm going to use single just as an example. Now the highest tax bracket is 37% if you're earning over $500,000 a year. So keep in mind that for the purpose of this video because we're going to use that to do some math. Okay, one of the things I love about paying tax as a business person is that you get to choose when you pay your tax. Whereas if you are W-2 and you work for someone else, your tax gets taken out of your paycheck. There's really nothing you can do about it. It just comes out automatically. Now the advantage to paying your own tax is that, well, you get to use that cash until you have to pay your taxes every quarter or every year, depending on how you file. But also you can't have your tax return stolen by a hacker because if you owe money every year, then hey, someone might be able to hack into your account to pay your taxes for you. That would be fine. But realistically, no one's going to do that. So you don't ever have to worry about someone stealing your return. Now, the other part about that too is that since you owe money every every quarter, you have full control of that. And so let's say you miss a tax payment or you're late on your taxes, whether you do it accidentally or intentionally, there are penalties. And currently it's a 5% penalty if you don't pay your taxes on time. But you can also kind of look at that as like a, a free government loan. Well, it's not free, it's 5%, but that's actually pretty good in terms of business credit. So you pay your taxes back a little late, you pay the penalty, hey, you got to use that cash in the meantime, uh, where it's almost kind of like a de facto loan. Now you gotta be responsible with this. You can't let your taxes go too long. There are lots of other negative penalties that come into not paying your taxes. So don't interpret this as like, don't pay your taxes. Just interpret it as, hey, you've got more cash flow management options when you pay your taxes in business versus when you pay it as a W-2, you really have no choice. Okay, so let's start with an example. Let's say that you're a W-2 employee and you make $60,000 a year. That would put you in the 22% tax bracket and the 22% tax bracket would have you paying $13,200 a year in tax. And that leaves about $3,900 a month left over for expenses after you've paid your taxes. And so if you spent, let's say $1,500 a month on your housing, that would leave $2,000 a month that you could spend on your lifestyle and bills and utilities and that sort of thing, which would leave you $400 a month to save and invest. Now you might be able to up your savings some by decreasing your lifestyle. And I don't want to get into the details of how you would spend that budgetary um, money, but I want to use this as a tax example. And so let's say you just saved 400 bucks a month. That would be about $4,800 a year. So you'd be saving $5,000 a year to invest. So after all of your work and effort, you're literally left with $5,000 a year is what you have to show for it. Well, you got to live somewhere and you got to eat and all that stuff, but you don't get to keep it. It doesn't serve you in the long run. Now that $4,800 is about a third, or not quite a third of what you pay in tax. So you're paying the government really three times more than what you get to keep for your lifestyle and your, your future effectively. Okay, so let's go with the same person who's making $60,000 a year, except from a small business. Uh, they're making the same amount of money. They still have the same $3,900 a month of income to play with. Uh, they still pay the same tax rate of 22%. However, some of that discretionary spending, uh, you can reclassify it as business expenses. And so just for an example, now this is just you know purely hypothetical, but it's still reasonable. You might be spending 500 bucks a month on your car, 200 bucks a month on insurance, um, $100 a month on your phone, which you also use for your business. And then also you can deduct a portion of your home expenses, like a home office, uh, as uh, toward the business, because that is also deductible. So let's say you can deduct $300 a month out of your $1,500 a month um, for home office or um, using some portion of your home for your business. So that comes up to $1,100 a month of deductible expenses owning a business that you can't deduct as a W-2 employee. And that comes out to 
$13,200 a year. So that's just a pretty significant tax savings. So if you take that off of your 60,000, that leaves you a taxable amount of $46,800, which means you're only paying $10,300 in tax instead of the 13,200 in tax that you were paying as a W-2 employee. So that allows you to keep $2,900 more dollars that you would, could put toward investing and growing your wealth than you could as a W-2 employee, even though you're spending everything on the exact same things, right? You're not changing your spending, you just have more deductions that you can make. So now you're saving $7,700 a year instead of $4,800 a year, and that is now three quarters of your total tax payment. So you're paying in terms of a portion of the amount that you would pay toward the government, you can save and invest a much larger portion compared to that amount than you could as a W-2 employee. Now, here is the super kicker. I just love this. So of that $7,700, let's say you put that into a tax deferred account. It could be a 401k, it could be a SEP if you're self-employed. Now that money is also deductible. So when you deduct that $7,700 because it's a, um, a tax deferred contribution to a retirement plan, now your taxable income goes from $46,800 down to below $40,000. So now you're at $39,100. And guess what happens once you go below $40,000 a year? Your tax bracket just dropped from 22% down to 12%. And this is the beauty of owning a business is all of those deductions. Because you, can, you want to make your taxable income as low as possible and look like you're making as little money as possible in a business. And then, so now, your tax burden is only $4,700 in tax compared to $13,200 that the same W-2 employee uh, would be paying, making that money as an employee. So if you're only paying $4,700 in tax, that gives you an extra $5,600 to do with what you please. And if you add that to the $7,700 that you're already putting in your tax deferred account, maybe you save that $5,600 in a taxable account so that you can put it in real estate, which is a very tax efficient investment. But now you are investing $13,300 a year compared to $4,800 a year. You're investing almost triple because you make your income from a business instead of a W-2. Now, to me, that is magic. You're gonna get there three times faster than you would as an employee simply by making the same amount of money, but from a business. So there is just a huge advantage in owning a business from a tax perspective that can really allow you to keep more money and pay less tax all completely and legitimately uh, legal. Now, of course, I'm not a CPA. I'm just some guy on the internet making videos. I do use these strategies with my own business, but of course I also have an accountant and I make sure that everything is above board, totally legal and falls within all of the right buckets but you can certainly use these strategies to save money on your taxes and keep more and invest more and get to that time freedom a lot sooner. So do you have a side business? Do you run a business on your own? Do you use these tax strategies to help you pay less tax? I would love to know your thoughts in the comments below. Another great reason to have a business is that a business can scale because a business is really like, hey, these inputs and actions create these outputs plus profit. And if you find enough resources or hire the people to run the systems, then you can scale that business. Now, I say that like it's easy to do. It's not. That is a whole thing on its own. It's a very hard problem. Most people fail at it. However, there is a possibility there to scale inputs equals outputs plus profit. Whereas if you're working for someone else, you're mostly gated on your time. You can contribute your time and that's it. Your salary can certainly grow and some jobs have a very high pay scale, but you really can only scale by the amount of time that you put in. And we all only have 24 hours in a day, so at some point you're gonna run into that ceiling. Whereas with a business, you can scale it to however big you're capable of doing so. Thanks so much for watching this video. Please feel free to give it a like and subscribe if you wanna see more videos from me every week on personal finance and achieving time freedom through real estate. Really appreciate you watching this and I'll see you next time.